Good evening and welcome to St. Mary's. Please join us in our opening hymn, number 825, Immaculate Mary, 825, verses 1, 2, and 4. Immaculate Mary, our praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed your glory proclaim. On earth we your children invoke your sweet name. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. We pray for the church, our true for the land of our birth. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Certainly welcome to all. Maybe a special welcome to um, students and parents. We're having a kind of an open house or a, a back to school gathering after mass today. So any of those who are here, some of them are over there working, getting set up. But so it's good for us to gather. And, and today, as we um, as we join in prayers, we come to mass. We celebrate the solemnity. Of the immaculate uh, of the, the assumption of Mary, that at the end of her life Mary was assumed um, into heaven. We hope to follow, so we uh, seek the graces um, and, and inspiration of God in this holy mass <clears throat> to help us on our journey to Christ. We prepare by calling to mind our sin. And we ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word, made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the 
Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in looking on the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary raised her to this grace, that your only begotten Son was born of her according to the flesh, and that she was crowned this day with surpassing glory. Grant through her prayers that saved by the mystery of your redemption, we may merit to be exalted by you on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and its head, on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then. I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. of your rest, you and the ark of your holiness. Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your holiness. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah, We heard of it in the fields of Jar. Let us enter his dwelling. 
let us worship at his footstool. Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your holiness. May your priests be clothed with justice, let your faithful one shout merrily for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, reject not the plea of your anointed. Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your holiness. For the Lord has chosen Zion, he prefers her for his dwelling. Zion is my resting place forever, in her will I dwell for I prefer her. Lord, go up to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your holiness. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed 
are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. In every generation, he has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help, to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his children forever. Mary Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, so we hear some strong messages today, and the three things that I'm hearing really strongly is messages that Mary is showing us of love, forgiveness, and hope. We know that the assumption is not an ascension. Okay, so don't get those two confused. We don't, they didn't have documentation of Mary ascending into heaven. There's no document, documentation of really when the exact date she passed away. So we don't know that she really died. And so through um, prayer and through thoughts, they figured out that Mary was assumed into heaven. She was brought, called to from Jesus and God and called up into heaven. Now Mary left a lot of strong messages and still leaves a lot of strong messages as we hear of great sightings of great, um, she visits people and we hear of apparitions of Mary um, through Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Guadalupe, um, Our Lady of Fatima. It, there's a, a, a whole lot of them. Um, I think there's 18 of them. One of them is just coming to fruition. I think they're still trying to decide whether it is a true um, apparition or not. But you have to wonder what exactly are these messages Mary's trying to get through to us? And as I studied most of them, a common theme kept popping up. And that theme was to bring the people back to Jesus, to bring the people back, to gather the flock back to Jesus. And that so shows so much love first of all, and it shows a lot of forgiveness. And where do we get the forgiveness? We get the forgiveness that Mary watched her son crucified. She watched and was in the place of her son and was documented that she was underneath the cross at one time. 
when her son had passed and said his last words. So Mary watched her son crucified, but loved us and him so much that she's willing to forgive us. And then through all the graces and mercies of God, she comes back in apparitions and shows us visions that she wants us to come back to her son. She forgives us for our sins, just as Jesus did, and wants us to come and love her son. Now, I think that Mary is probably one of the best examples that we could ever look at and try to emulate. Not only that great act of forgiveness and that great act of love, but also that, the, the hope that we all can be saved and we all have salvation granted to us. We know that even though Mary may not have, maybe she was dead or maybe we, we don't know for sure, but she was ascended into heaven. Do we have the same hope? Certainly she, she says so. In the greatness of God, we all have the hope that we can ascend or we can go into heaven. Mary's love was so great and we have so much to learn from her. I can't help but keep going back to John. Here we have this little baby that's inside the womb of Elizabeth. And our Lord God is so powerful, so powerful that John knew that there was a savior of the world inside the womb of Mary. When Mary walked into the room, he leapt for joy. Well, I want to be John for a sec, for my whole life. I want to be John because I want to be able to leap for joy when I walk into church. I want to leap for joy when I think of Jesus. I want to leap for joy and hope that there is true salvation and kindness in this world. John shows us a prime example of what to do after we receive the Lord. I can't help to, you know, just shy away from Mary just for a second because I want to be like John. And John shows us as he leapt for joy afterwards that he, after he met the Lord, he gave his life to Christ. And he spent his whole life not thinking about himself, not thinking about treasures, not thinking about riches, not thinking about anything that gave him joy. He thought of one thing, preparing people for Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of Jesus bringing people in. After the moment that Mary walked into the room, he was given a new life. And so are we. When we walk in to this church and we receive the Holy Eucharist, the true body of Christ, we should leap for joy and experience a new life, a new coming of Christ inside of us every single time we receive it. That's beautiful. I want to be like John. 
And it's only through Mary's visitation that that happened. Mary's magnificence is truly a blessed one. And she's not to be forgotten. But it's her mission that needs to be brought forward. It is what she stood for that needs to be brought forward. Her mission to bring people back to Jesus. And John was almost the same way. He wanted to prepare people for Jesus. Mary's message is loud and clear. She will help us fight the devil. She will help us fight through the evil parts of the world. She will help us to salvation because she loves us so much. And she wants us all to leap for joy and to come with her. I have one little story that I have to share because it was given to me by God and it has nothing to do with the assumption of Mary. Well, it does, and you can tie it in if you try really hard because it's all about Jesus. But I have to share something that happened to me on Wednesday. And I went into prison to do my prison ministry at Toledo Correctional Institution and kind of went through the normal paces. I went through protective custody and was locked in a little room with a guy for a while and this and that and the other thing. And it, it was all going good. And then at the end, I had a chance to go with Father down to a protective, it was um, segregation, excuse me, to segregation, where they're locked in cells and they're not brought out in front of people. So they grabbed a hold of this inmate and they cuffed him and then they shackled him and then they tied a chain in between the, the cuffs and the shackles. And then they grabbed a hold of him and dragged him out of the cell, down the steps, and I mean dragged because this guy, he couldn't, he had to walk at their pace. And they're going pretty fast and he's got shackles on, and he's, he's gotta go like this. And he couldn't hardly keep up with them and they're pulling him. And it, it was just like, are you kidding me? Well, they brought him into this little cage. I call it a cage. It's three foot by three foot. And we brought him down in there, and there's a, a hole in the cage, in the cell, about one foot by four inches. And the young man knelt down on the floor. And we proceeded to baptize him and poured water over his head. And it just was amazing. If you could see the joy and the happiness in this inmate's face, you would be blown away, brought to tears for sure. It was clearly one of the most spiritual moments that I've ever been witnessed of. And this young man, through the darkness of darkness, received the light of Christ. Just like John leapt for joy in a womb, he was leaping for joy. The happiness was with him. He was free in the prison. Shackles and chains did not keep him prisoned, they left him free. He was free to be with God and free of the evil. 
baptism was a beautiful thing, and he also received the Holy Eucharist um, the same day. We could not confirm him. The bishop is going to come back and do that. And oh, I pray I get to be present at that because, you know, we get this fancy ceremony and things are so, you know, beautiful to see our young ones go through the First Communion and, and baptism. Um, it's such a joyous situation. But can you just fathom seeing somebody shackled and chained and drug in? and be happier than you could ever imagine. That's what Mother Mary wants. That's what Mary stands for. Love, forgiveness, and hope. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's gracious care, through the, through the intercession of Mary, our Heavenly Mother, we offer our needs and our prayers. For the church that we continu may continue to grow in holiness as we hear the word of God and observe it as did Mary, the mother of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and all who serve in public office, may they be open to the truth of Jesus and lead in ways that honors God and promotes peace in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are poor and lowly, may they be gifted up, lifted up, and filled with good things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women around the world, may they receive the honor and respect that is due to all children of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Michael Parish, as they will celebrate their 100th anniversary next Saturday with Bishop Thomas. May we all remember the sacrifices of our ancestors and always cherish our Catholic faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people, may they respond generously and willingly if the Lord calls them to or ordained or consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all teachers, administrators, staff, parents, and students. As they prepare for the start of another school year, may God guide their efforts, keep them safe, and bless them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from the disasters of nature or any illness or disease, may they experience comfort and healing, knowing God is always close to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Claire Goble, may the faithful departed be united with Mary and all the saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the Parish Book of Intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have blessed us with great things, and you indeed are holy. Come to our aid in our times of need and answer the prayers that we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn will be 689, The Servant Song, 689. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we celebrate on the assumption of the Holy Mother of God, that it may lead us to your pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out 
for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Daniel our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have, have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn will be 580, Make of Our Hands a Throne, 580. one with you. 
taste of this goodness and feast at this banquet. How blessed the faithful who find shelter in God. Look to your Maker, be radiant with glory. For those who love the Lord are saved from their fears. Make of our hands a throne to hold the bread of heaven. Make of our hearts a home to hold the very wine of life in this mystery, Lord. Make us one with you. You keep your promise, O God, our Savior. Hope of the distant isles and all of the earth, you crown us with goodness, your fields decked with harvest, your valleys clothed in wheat resound with your joy. Make of our hands a throne to hold the bread of heaven. Make of our hearts a home to hold the very wine of life. In this mystery, Lord, make us one with you. From clouds above us, you send down your blessings. The bread of heaven and the waters of life, you rain down your bounty and kiss us with manna. Bread of the angels, of our food and our feast. Make of our hands a throne to hold the bread of heaven. Make of our hearts a home to hold the very wine of life in this mystery lord make us one with you with patient yearning we look to you in hunger and through the length of days you feed all your flock your hands with abundance are wide with your promise you grant the longings of a people in need make of our hands a throne to hold the bread of heaven make of our hearts a home to hold the very wine of life in this mystery lord make us one with you
King of creation, Son of God and Son of Man, you will we cherish, you will we honor, light of our souls, their joy and crown. Fair are the meadows, fair are the woodlands, robed in flowers of blooming spring. Jesus is fairer, Jesus is purer, He makes our suffering spirit sing. Let us pray. Having partaken in the, of this heavenly table, we beseech your mercy, Lord our God that we who honor the assumption of the Mother of God may be freed from every threat of harm through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. So school starts here at St. Mary's and in Edgerton on Tuesday, and there's a shout of rejoicing. Maybe by the parents, I don't know. I think the kids, many of them are excited about school starting again and getting back on with things. But so, um, so there is an open house or a, an event where the students are all invited today to come to um, St. Mary's and bring their school bags and their, some of their things and drop them off. And I hear they have hot dogs, you know, and maybe some snacks and whatever. So certainly any students and parents, anybody, if you um, haven't been there for a while or if you have just even last year and want to wander through, certainly you're welcome to uh, wander through and, and, and uh, I guess it, it's all a perspective. Probably um, now the church or the school will be as beautiful as you'll ever find it. It's all polished and clean and, and neat. But is it really beautiful then? It's like when it's full of kids. So next week it'll be even more beautiful. So, so, so again, certainly um, all, all are, are certainly um, welcome and continue to pray for all the students as they start another school year. And that also, hopefully, as all of you know, that next Saturday, Bishop Thomas will be at St. Michael's in, in Hicksville. So they're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the dedication of the current church building. And then the, the church actually goes back 140 years to the original church in, in Hicksville, and probably 180 years since some of the first Catholics gathered for Mass. So the bishop will, there, will be there, all are invited, it's a regular Mass, just that the bishop will be there in, in, in celebrating the Mass. And then afterwards will be a reception and meal and potluck and all of that. But so, um, so, 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 so again, it's just a joyous event to celebrate with, with um, our neighbors at, at St. Michael's. So all are certainly welcome to attend the Mass. There will be the regular four o'clock Mass here um, for those you know, that, that uh, don't want to travel to Hicksville and join in that Mass. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down and pray for the blessing. Please join by responding, amen. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. Amen. 
May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be 824. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above. 824. Salve, salve, salve.